On the Radio is brought to you by Zurich Insurance, the perfect place to catch up with all things Melbourne. If you enjoy this content and want more inside access from the team, make sure you visit the club website. No worries. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. How do you sum up last night? Uh, it was a good win. Yeah, it was gritty. Um, it was a very defensive game for us. Offensively, uh, from a viewer's standpoint, it probably wasn't a great spectacle, but uh, we knew that it was going to be a sort of hard-fought game. They're um, coming in as the second best uh, offensive team in the in the AFL, and for us to sort of stamp, um, you know, a win like that in terms of defensively was uh, was a great win for us. You guys were coming off a really a shock loss on the Queen's birthday holiday to Collingwood. Uh, what was the fallout from all of that? Was it sort of a major thing that you got out of um, that kind of defeat that you took over the bye? Oh, I think the biggest thing is we just didn't play our brand, Queen Birthday. Um, I mean, give credit to Collingwood. You know, they played an extremely great brand of football. Um, you know, but for us, we just didn't play the way we've been playing all season. Defensively, we were really disappointing, and um, that sort of just crept into our, you know, what we stand for, a little bit of selfishness. And, uh, yeah, I just think, you know, to reset up the bye and to get a win against the sort of informed team at Essendon was, uh, was awesome. Uh, Christian, it's Brett Lydia here, mate. First things first, has Joe Allen B tweeted you back yet? <laughs> he hasn't. He wouldn't have a clue who I am. So That's disappointing. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's all i got to say on that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> mate, uh, just, you boys are absolutely flying at the moment. Top of the ladder, 12-2. and two. I just want to know, like, what's, uh, what's the internal talk been like in terms of keeping the motivation levels up and, and keeping everybody on edge to continue that winning form, but to make sure that you don't start to get comfortable with where you're at? Yeah, it's, it's a really good point. I think for us, uh, we've never been in this position before. Um, I mean, on top of the ladder for a long, long time. So for us, that's probably the motivation for us is for our fans and for um, you know, people who have been with us for a long time have been patiently waiting for a team like this to sort of um, put the club back on the map. Um, so for us, that's the motivation for us. And um, you know, at no point are we getting comfortable in where we are. We haven't done anything. You know, we're twelve and two. Yes, and it's a great start to the season. Um, but for us, we need to be playing our best footy in finals, and hopefully that comes at the end of the year. And we're playing in big games at the end of the year. So uh, for us, that's that's you know the really critical thing. And and I think as well is you know we're sort of playing. I, I feel like. Well, personally, I love playing with a chip on my shoulder. I like the team that we're playing with a chip on our shoulder. I feel like every game we've got a point to prove, whether we're versing um, a team that's not going great or a team that's going really well. And um, Yeah, I think you've sort of seen from our season this year, we play unbelievable against really good teams because I feel like you know we want to sort of have an attitude that we are the best team, but then also... It's you know, I wouldn't say it's comfortability, but I think you know against the teams that um, aren't going as well, we really need to you know put our foot on the throat and 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 stamp our authority. Do you feel like the position you're in now that you know that old the the being the hunter or being the hunted mentality is is hard to maintain in the position you're in? Um, well, it's a good question. Um, I think every game for us, we want to be obviously we know we're probably coming in as the hunted. Um, but I think for us, though, I mean, we haven't been in a position before, so I still like being, I still like being the hunter, and I still like having a point to prove. I think, you know, each team is sort of, um, you know, each week we play, we've sort of got something that we can um, have against the other team. I think, you know, against Essendon, we sort of haven't had a good record against them in a, in a fair while, and um, you know, for us, we needed to come out and prove a point that defensively we're a really strong team, and I think um, each game we've sort of got something that we can prove. Just on Simon Goodwin, there's obviously much made about last year and the pressure he's under and an extension. How have you seen like his performance this year? Have you seen it different? Did he learn from last year and the years prior? Um, have you grown together as a group? But what has he improved this year to, to get him in the position where you guys are today? Yeah, I think it was, a, speaking on last year, I think it was a bit of unfair scrutiny on him, to be honest. I think the players... Um, we had a much more of an impact on last year than I think the coaches did, to be honest. Um, I think the way we're playing now is the way that we should have been playing. You know, I think every team should be playing is just unselfish football and playing for each other and playing your roles. And Goody, for me, individually, has been an unbelievable person for my life, not just on the field, but off the field and making me a better person and, and wanting me to be the player I know I can become. And he knows it as well. So... Um, but, but for Goody, he's always had trust in not just myself but the team. And um, I think maybe last year we sort of sat him down and we just sort of said, you know, we love the person that came to the club from Essendon as the assistant coach. And the first couple of years as the head coach, who really built relationships with us boys. And 
you know, we sort of missed that side of Goody. I think obviously last year, no doubt about it. I mean, the stress he would have been under would have been ridiculous. So for him to go a little bit insular, um, you know, I don't see any reason why he, would, or why he should have anyway, to be honest. I think, you know, anyone in that position um, would have felt the stress that he was under. So for him, we just need to have the backing of him and, and trust the game plan that him and the coaching staff that um, what, they're, what they're putting in front of us is... Uh, is what we want to play. Um, and I think the inclusion of Uze and, and Choco Williams as well is um, is unbelievable. So you guys have, the, as players, you have that relationship with Goody that you, you mentioned that you sat down with him at the end of the year and gave him feedback, essentially, as, as play, or players to coach? Yeah, definitely. I think that's what's improved as you know, at this footy club, not just from coach to player, but also player to player. I think, you know, we're a young team and sometimes... Uh, I mean, you guys can probably understand this. When you, you're when you a young team and you want to give feedback, you sometimes think that oh, it might hurt the other player or it might affect you know our relationship. But I think we've gotten to a point now over the last year or so that when we give feedback, it doesn't. It's not personal and it's not about making you you know rip you to shreds. It's about making you a better person and making you a better player for this football club. And I felt like the way we're sort of accepting feedback um, in a way and giving it is so much more constructive. And um, I think as well like. You know, of maturing, Jake Lever's maturing, um, you know, Clayton Oliver, Christian Salem, Angus Brayshaw. We've got a really good core group of guys who are sort of at that age now where uh, we want to take this footy club to where we know we can get to. And I think those conversations we're having um, in the middle of the game um, and, you know, before the game and um, during the week is, uh, is really good. Uh, Christian, just a quick one on your, on your forward line. You spoke about the uh, the unselfishness, and that you've got a couple of really good young role players. I think Neil Bullen fits into that. Charlie Spargo, another one. Whereabouts? What's your uh, ideal forward line in your eyes? Does it involve a, a Brown and a Wiedemann, or is it the setup you've had almost for the start of the year and what we saw last night is uh, your probably most formidable one? Um, <laughs> I'm going to be blunt. I don't really care, to be honest, as long as we're kicking goals. <laughs> that's, fair, that's fair. Yeah, look, I'm not too sure. I think the, the position we've got ourselves in is, is a really healthy position in terms of we can sort of muck around with a few little things here and there. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure, to be honest. Uh, I think, um, you know, if we go small, we've got the luxury of putting more pressure on, but then if we also bring Wiedemann and, and Ben Brown in, we've got the luxury of um, having a tall target. And I think, um, you know, we can play two different styles. We can go um, a bit more contest line kicks and, and, and a bit more... Um, straight line, but then also we saw probably last night we were sort of changing angles a bit more and we are going lowering our eyes a bit more. So I don't know, to be honest. I think um, having Ben Brown or Wiedemann out of the team sort of helps, uh, well, not helps, I think it, it makes me play a bit more forward as well. But then also when they're in there, I play a bit, pretty, pretty of a different position as well. I'm pretty more high up at the field um, as a half forward. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting one. I think it's something that will we'll be talked about for the rest of the season. But um, for us... Um, We've seen both lineups sort of be positive, so yeah. Uh, Christian Melbourne haven't had a lot of success in recent times, and it feels like there's still a portion of footy followers that are just waiting for Melbourne to fall over. It's almost like, oh, the same thing will happen with Melbourne again, and uh, given the reputation of the past. What do you say to, to those footy fans that perhaps haven't been paying close enough attention to the Ds this year? Well, that's up to them to think about that and talk about that. <laughs> At the moment, we're just sort of controlling what we can control. I mean, we're 12-2. and two. Uh, we've got ourselves in an unbelievable position. I think, um, you know, I think that specula- that talk at the start of the year is probably warranted considering our, our history. But I think we've I think we've put enough runs on the board now to know that we're a very good team, uh, a very trustworthy, respectable team. And I think as well, sort of the, the way we've won. I don't think we've actually dominated games. I think we've sat, we've had to come from adversity in almost every single game. I think you know last night's game was a sloppy game at half time and. I think we were down maybe at half time or only up by a couple of points. But I think every single game we've played, uh, you know, we've had to overcome some sort of adversity, whether we're down by 15 at half time or we're not playing the way we are. And I think, like, so that's the maturity of this football team at the moment is that the way we're sort of able to bounce back and, and accept what's actually happening and just realise that, you know what, they're actually playing really good football, the team we're versing. Well, let's just keep sticking to our structure and trust what, what, the, coaching, what the coaching staff is saying and let's just go out and have fun and play. And do you have a bit of a milk problem at the club at the moment? We had Christian Salem on as part of the post game last night. This is what he had to say about uh, a cup of milk going down as part of the team song. Is that a cup of milk? And what happened with it mid song? Oh, was that on TV? Was it? It certainly was. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> um, that's a fine. Yeah, I was. Um, I was trying to fix my mask. I forgot we had to wear masks, and it was. Uh, yeah, 
That was some protein milk, and the dietitian wasn't too happy because there wasn't many left. Was it Kate Chandler a few weeks ago who got the milk on him in the song? Were you responsible for that as well? Yeah, I was, actually. I don't <laughs> know how you picked that up. But, uh, yeah, there's probably a no-go the milk. We usually Gatorade and water, but it's his yeah. first win, so I thought, why not milk him? Did you get a stern? <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you get a talking to after that? Yeah, Jakey Lever wasn't happy with me, but oh, well, it's his first win. you remember it. <laughs> Do you have to take control of some of that, Christian? <laughs> yeah, I'm not too sure. I don't know why he thought taking your mask off is not going to drop the mil- I don't know what happened there, to be <laughs> honest. But uh, that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll give him a warning there. Uh, the, the one with Jake, with Trendler was a bit... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just think milk's a, milk's a hard thing to get out of the out of the ground. So. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, Brett and I yeah. both three kids. Milk goes a long way, isn't it? Amazing, yeah. mate. Yeah. A little bit yeah. of dark milk. <laughs> and it's, uh, I think for me, it's, the dietitian's done a great job of providing you know milkshakes or protein shakes after the game. And uh, if we're dropping them on the ground, it's not a great look. So. <laughs> I saw some shots. I think Jake Lever had to clean it up for him as well last night. The Christian <laughs> yeah, Salem obviously. It's always that, one of the dads. Yeah. I understand. I've got out there. It's always one of the dads to understand the, uh, what that is. <laughs> uh, Christian, well done last night. Great to see the Ds flying 12-2. and two. Could be two games clear on top of the table, depending on what happens today. Um, what's on for the rest of the day? I know the VFL boys are in action. Are you watching them? Uh, yes, I'm currently in Casey at the moment. Uh, we're going to watch the VFL boys against Essendon, so... Hopefully they get the W at the moment. They're uh, they're in unbelievable form, and, and I think the the best thing about the position we're in is the competition for spots is awesome, and uh, yeah, they're playing a great brand of footy as well. Enjoy the day. Appreciate your time. Thanks, guys. Thank you for having me.